In the heart of every city and nearly in every developed country, we are seeing a silent change of how we commute, how we transport services and goods. The transition between ICE vehicles and electric vehicles is happening daily and is happening right in front of our eyes. Elon Musk single-handedly led Tesla to push the world, to accelerate the world to transition to a renewable energy. And today we are going to talk about what is happening and let's discuss what we can expect here to the next few years. Welcome, my friends. You are watching the Better Future Project, where we are all about sharing positivity, knowledge, and having a good time together. For the last 100 years and for the latest dec decades, Legacy Automakers has run the show and the internal combustion vehicles has roared or on our streets. Nothing wrong with that. They have managed to bring us to a new level as a humanity and as a civilization. However, the toll of the environment is something that we can no longer further just take for granted. It's too big of an impact and it's changing the climate. So there you go. We know that there is an issue with one of the most useful things we currently use, vehicles. So the internal combustion vehicles, are, there is nothing wrong with them. They are very good. They are reliable. They, they are very useful. However, the pollution they are creating and the number of the vehicles that are currently on the road is just too much for our planet. We need to keep the vehicles as a way to commute and transport services, goods and ourselves. But we need to change the fuel that we are using, the energy source that we are using. And this is where Tesla came and Elon Musk pushed the whole industry towards electrification and the usage of renewable energy. The benefits of electric vehicles are now so huge. It's not just about the greener economy, but also about the efficiency, the safety, and the transition from the vehicles to be vehicles the way we know them, to be smart vehicles. And smart vehicles are the future. It is the same like the phones. We used to have these old phones that we're going to spin or dial. We're going to have this wires everywhere then the mobile phones that came and now we've got smartphones and smartphones includes a lot of different technology that is currently in one device and that's wonderful because i don't need to have a camera i don't need to have a gps on the side i don't need to have like some videos and laptop with this it's just like inside camera outside camera and the way we communicate from text message to video calls, it's all in one device. It's just a matter of time when vehicles become smart and the electrification is helping. For the advancement of the batteries, the structure of it, the way it's built, the way it's going to be recycled, the way it's used, the amount of time that these batteries can be recharged, the speed they're going to be recharged for, it's all rising and it's all going to the right direction. So we can see that the battery technology is just exponentially getting better and cheaper. So respectively, it becomes more affordable. This will lead to, to vehicles that are smart vehicles. They are affordable vehicles. They are cleaner vehicles. They're using renewable energy. The green future is just a step away. We can see now that there is a massive push from some economies like the Chinese one. And we can see that there is a mass adoption from, for electric vehicles from the Swiss economy, Norway economy. And we can see that this is uprising into the Chinese economy. And now we can see that the West is currently focused on insensitive adopting this new technology. We know that the electric vehicles are the future, but the media continues to tell us that uh, the electric vehicles are on a fall and ICE vehicles will be still here in 2030. I've got to tell you, I don't know why the media continues to talk nonsense because we can see the data and the data shows different things. While they say, oh, this guy or this company, sorry, is like selling less vehicles, others are actually bumping their numbers. According to the latest details, 
China can produce an extra 8 million vehicles a year that are electric. This is the capacity they have. So currently we hear that electric vehicles are, are slow to be manufactured. It takes time and, and, and all this nonsense. Electric vehicles are on the rise. Electric vehicles are better cars. Electric vehicles are the future of how we transport goods, services, and we as humans, how we commute between point A and point B. And what about safety? There are some great advancements into the ICE vehicles. Within the last 100 years, we have seen improved brakes, improved times, uh, some sort of autopilot features are kind of on the rise because it's it's a technology thing that uh, uh, legacy automakers are adopting very, very slowly. But we can see that the seat belts got better, the airbags improved, they have airbags on the side. And now all this is already way better into electric vehicles than into the ICE vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the reason again, electric vehicles has a lot of sensors. They have a lot of points of contact. Every time when uh, a car crash happens, Tesla uh, understands and learns more about it. And then the FSD software is something that no legacy automaker possesses at the moment. Hopefully they're going to license it or have some sort of similarity because this software, FSD software, is currently saving lives. According to the latest data, just a simple um, update like that uh, between a normal ICE vehicle, uh, which is an average number, of course, I'm talking about, and an electric vehicle that is Tesla and that is uh, with FSD mode uh, turned on. We're looking about 10 times difference in terms of accidents per 1 million miles. That means Tesla is already 10 times safer. So let me ask you a question. And of course, please make sure you comment into the comments. But what would you like to have as a vehicle? 10 times safer car for you and your family? Or would you like to have a ICE vehicle that is polluting the environment and is obviously um, making the air quality uh, worse? Of course, the electric vehicle will win probably 9 out of 10 times, hopefully 10 out of 10 times, but most likely 9, nine out of 10 times. So we do know that the rise of these electric vehicles is happening. And then we need to look into what is happening with these ICE vehicles then. We need to understand that if one vehicle, a new disruptor is coming onto the market and they're taking a share, there will be some results that are firing back into the ICE vehicle industry. And this seems to be contra-intuitive because currently ICE vehicles are actually offering dividends, which I think is going away within the next couple of years. I can see that the profits and whatnot of uh, legacy automakers are going up. They're talking about record sales. All this is like such nonsense because I look deeper into it. And when the ICE vehicle legacy automakers are saying we have record sales, what they actually mean is that they took their vehicles, they made them, and they sent them to dealerships. And how much of those are being, uh, how many of these cars have been sold from the dealerships? We just don't know. We don't have this data, but we can see that the dealerships are getting fuller and fuller, which means that the ICE vehicles are currently getting dust especially in China. The whole world market is 100% of, new, let's say, it's 100% of sales of new vehicles. 35% of that total addressable market is made in China. Half of this is already electric. Legacy automakers are currently saying, no, we, we, we do record sales. We continue to sell all our vehicles, whatnot. How is that possible that half of the vehicles will be electric? that are, are sold for the last month. And it seems that for this month as well. And the legacy automakers are still selling as many cars. So that's impossible, which means there will be some huge drops into vehicles that are currently producing, uh, into vehicle manufacturers that are currently producing electric vehicles, ICE vehicles. What we're going to face is this huge disruption coming from China. And then it's just going to roll over as dominoes 
uh, across uh, the world. We are going to witness this. I hope this is going to happen fast enough and I hope the legacy automakers are going to take the transition to electric vehicles faster and, and they will actually produce a very good, reliable, safe, cleaner, greener cars for all of us to use. I've looked also into the numbers that electric uh, that ICE vehicles are currently making a lot more profits. There are videos and interviews where CEOs will say, we can sell you on our cars on pretty much zero profit because later on, once the cars get old, we're going to be able to sell parts for these vehicles. And on these parts, we are going to put a high profit margin for the company. So the mass manufacturers actually are targeting the continuous support of the vehicles than the actual price for profit into the vehicle. This is so important because now I start to understand why ICE vehicles are saying that they are making a lot more money than ever. And the reason is that for the very first time into the last decades, in America, the average age of an ICE vehicle is over 12 years old. I believe consumers are waiting for affordable electric vehicles. And I also know that when the vehicles get like 10 plus years old, they need maintenance. What happens is, is the current legacy automakers are shuffling their vehicles into dealerships. They put down into their accounts and that they've sold these vehicles. And then the vehicles that are actually getting colder are requesting parts to be fixed. So the legacy automakers are producing those and are boosting their income by selling this high profit, uh, high profit margin uh, parts for, for their vehicles. And, but this is having an end. So that end is in about eight years. If the average vehicle is just over 12, we know that the, the age of 20 years of the vehicle is when the vehicles are written off. So we are going to have about an additional eight years of all right income for legacy automakers for their parts. And their new vehicles, new ICE vehicle sales will just collapse. We're going to see into the next few years a massive drop and it's going to be quick one. It's going to be an impactful one. And the only way of them balancing their books will be by selling more parts for the elderly vehicles, older, older vehicles that they are already having onto the market. And this is still coming to 2030. So if we look at the price of electric vehicles, the new software FSD, how a car like that is a smart vehicle and can be five times more utilized because of the FSD software. What is going to happen with the ICE vehicles? You guys know that the, they, they don't just stand a chance. We're going to stay tuned. We're going to stay informed. Hopefully we're going to see how things are adjusting and they're not too fast because people will need to adjust their skills as well and hopefully get into a new jobs that are much more interesting, that better engineering is involved. And of course this further accelerate the transition to renewable energy. If you like my channel, make sure that you, li you like it, you subscribe it, put your comments down below, hit the notification bells, and I will see you into the next one.